Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Daniel Pino. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with me, I'm a long-standing Microsoft Access uh, MVP. Today, uh, sadly, it's not the best news video. Um, another bug. Uh, I shouldn't say it's anything new because it isn't. It's something I flagged months and months and months ago. Well, here, let me put you in context for a second. I received an email earlier um, in which a user had requested that I try to update my pivot table demo database so it would use the new modern web browser. Now, the old version, which used the um, Internet Explorer uh, browser, you know, uh, works flawlessly. Um, and the way it works is you load the form, it generates an HTML string, so HTML content, and then we pass that string to the browser to interpret and render to the user. So I bypass needing physical files and this lightens what's required at deployment. It avoids all sorts of useless read writes to the hard drive. It's just a really optimal way of working with the web browser control. It's the ideal way to work with the web browser control. So I set off to do the exact same thing, but with the new modern web browser control, the Edge browser. And, well, sadly, I discovered that uh, dynamic content, so generating a string that represents an HTML page and then passing it to the browser, well, with the modern web browser, is simply unreliable is an understatement. So let me demonstrate. Um, I have very hit or miss results with this. But typically, if I do a compact and repair of a database, like so, so it's fresh, and I open this form, we're going to open this one here, it doesn't make a difference which one, I should get content. Okay? So I've got my pivot table, and you're saying, well, Daniel, what the hell are you going on about? This works beautifully. Wait. Now the user closes the form. They go about doing things, and then they want to reopen the form. And here is the problem. Nothing, nothing gets rendered. It's the same form. It's the same HTML. Nothing is changed. But now, it doesn't work anymore. And no matter how many times I try, it won't work again. The only way to make it work again is to perform the compact and repair or close the database. In which case, it should normally work again the first try. As I said, close the form, reopen it, it won't work. So obviously there's some type of caching, there's some type of lock, there, there's something going on that makes basically dynamic content useless. Unless you can guarantee you're opening the form once and only once in a session, dynamic content doesn't work. Okay, um, I've been going on about dynamic content. Some people may not 100% understand what I'm talking about. Well, here is the example. I use JavaScript document open. And then I write the content of this function to it, and I close it. So normally, as you saw, it renders the HTML. And it is just standard HTML. It creates an HTML document with a head section, a body section, where I'm going and pulling data from my database, and so on and so forth. So it's just a string variable. It's very simple. And as you saw, typically it works. Now, however, the workaround, the only way to get around this, is not to use dynamic content directly in the web browser. We have to use basically a hybrid dynamic version. And so the way to get around this problem is to instead, yes, you can generate dynamic HTML if you so choose, but now you need to first save it as a physical file on your hard drive and navigate to that file. It's far from ideal. Like I said, now we're incurring all sorts of read writes to the hard drive. And, you know, at the end of the day, if this is going to be a, an edge a web browser control that's being used a lot to display this over and over and over, you really can be hitting that hard drive pretty hard. Uh, but as I said, it is the, currently the only workaround that works reliably because um, dynamic directly dynamic content is really a crapshoot, and I wouldn't advise anyone to even remotely try to use it in production at this point in time. 
can always keep our fingers crossed that Microsoft one day will address this issue because it definitely falls under the category of bug. But um, I've given up hope on that. So um, go with the workaround. It isn't that hard to do. Write to generate your HTML, write it to a file, and then navigate to that file, and you can get proper results. Anyway, just a fair warning to any of those advanced uh, edge browser developers out there. Dynamic content is out and using physical files. Updating physical files and navigating is the way to go about it. Um, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.